Hi everybody, Dave Cross back again. I thought I'd do another quick video here of something interesting, something new, and uh, probably completely unrelated to anything we've talked about so far. But in the last 20 seconds or so, I've been able to create this API I felt was interesting and just kind of demonstrates again some more capabilities of Node-RED and some of the, the palette modules or nodes that are available, such as things like Active Directory and uh, creating, establishing, uh, you know, Active Directory connections, lookups, searches. And uh, I was just able to create a web <laughs> endpoint real quick and thought I'd take a look at it and, um, and show you as well. So in this particular example, uh, there are some AD nodes that allow you to interact with Active Directory. And um, with these nodes specifically, I have some that are enabling me to establish uh, a URL that I'm going to talk to and then a base DN and then pipe in a query to that node, which is going to look up my user, David. All right. So I have a Windows 2008 R2 server that I'm comparing against that has my users in Active Directory domains, uh, AD Home Local. And I'm going to specify in the Active Directory lookup syntax for the LDAP server uh, this sequence and tell it manually to do this. But I'm going to progress this, you know, to allow you to have forum input if maybe you're looking up some administrative details or you need access to points of contact and things using Node-RED to help you do that as a lookup tool and or using it as possibly an external authentication tool where you could, through a form, passing credentials, pass it into this Active Directory lookup securely through SSL, validating the user permissions, looking up the details and passing it back to whatever your authentication is. Um, or a two form or something if you can you know, figure something out from there. Uh, again, it's about imagination, not about uh, capabilities <laughs> of what's here. We can do anything with these. So um, in that node concept then is passing that query in and I'm going to debug this out so we can see it. But then I'm also going to pass it into another node, which is really more of a dynamic HTML tableify capability so that the payload if it's a, a list of objects or uh, separated by columns or you know uh, multiple parameters that it can parse it out into its respective table rows and columns and generate it back into a table and then you can customize style and format of this i'm not going to go through the details but very similar to css style sheeting here and that syntax and then lastly i just dropped in an endpoint you know to get adder user in the endpoint to uh, run this out so uh, let me see if I can find my tab here again. And this is uh, basically what I did. So just setting up to, to get AD user. I'm already using a hard code, but I could specify the username and a parameter. And I'll probably do that here shortly. And then the Tableify separates all of the different columns into their respective rows um, or column headers and rows. So um, of something of interest, and I thought that would be, well, something cool you could probably build off of if you wanted to go out and you know do things with this information. And again, uh, I can't stress this again, how phenomenal this is that you can create these API endpoints that quickly because between the time I made that last video and 38 seconds later, just dropping these in creates a workflow and it creates this API endpoint. You know, so something neat there. Now, while I'm here, I thought I'd go ahead and demonstrate a few other things. Uh, one of these is something I found when I was playing around with my Raspberry Pi. And I came up with this great project that I've been building. Took a, you know, touchscreen interface, got some whole other things to it, and I've got this Pi, and, and I started building these dashboards that would allow you to go out and do local scans and do things for your local networks and subnets that would provide you MAC address and IP address details scanning it locally through ARP. And through this Raspberry Pi, this, you know, $39 thing and an $80 display, you know, less than $130 in time, I was able to assemble it and, and do this. It's pretty cool. And one of the capabilities of that that was built in was that they had this ARP program that was uh, specific for it. And I'm just going to run it real quick, but you'll see up here that I have Detect Presence. And I had another Bluetooth project I was working on that in my home automation, I could have it detect when my Bluetooth headset was on and run some tests for me or go out and do some checks and or if, uh, if something disappeared to go out and do some checks or things. Or, you know, I was even kind of looking at perimeter security 
you know, if uh, Bluetooth gets picked up within 30 and it starts comparing things, I have a way actually in my network to, you know, know what my home users and Bluetooth are. But, you know, a stranger walking just by your house and things. Uh, paranoid, I'm not. But the capabilities of this and having some type of presence alert capabilities is a great thing. So I thought it was cool. And um, just to show you one of the things about Node Red, and you may have seen these kind of injection nodes all throughout these last few videos, but this is a, really a way that you can locally test or locally trigger an event or workflow or function as you've defined it in the flow. So I use this not only for local testing so that I don't have to go out and actually have a web interface, just kind of pass it, but you can pass it anything you want to global variable streams, JSON structures, timestamps, or you know even buffered values. And I'm just going to pass it true here, which in this case is saying run. And what I want to do uh, after I deploy that is I just want to trigger it. And this then kicks off the flow. And this is what I wanted to kind of show running the ARP, which is running this through a um, um, an ARP executive mode. So I'm, I'm running it in, on my Linux node where I'm running this. I'm executing a command, which is ARP-N, effectively, which is telling it on my local network that it's going to go ahead and pull out all of this ARP information. And now I've got the network interface, the IP is assigned, the MAC address. And if you're a network engineer and um, you're thinking about, I know I am, I'm thinking about how do you collect all this data in real time and moving around. You know, what if you had an iPhone app that as you're walking around your network is collecting this details, reporting it back to a central server and processing it. Um, and feeding your data and then updating your security logs and, and doing this from your employees, um, you know, as an opt-in uh, ability for your network engineers as you're moving around. So uh, think about that. If somebody wants to develop it, I'm interested in looking at it. So in the ARP scan, you know, then I have a couple of different outputs. And this particular execute function node has your standard STD out. So this is going to be uh, not what <laughs> the standard output that when it's successfully run, it outputs. Then we're going to have your standard error, and then you're going to have a return code if you're managing return code and further processing. So Node Red allows you to have different paths and different responses to different output of the same command. And because I wanted to split this, and I wanted to go out and do other checks where I was going to pull the Mac and, and do some other things, I was going to feed it in my Bluetooth stuff too. And again, splitting that, um, I then piped it into a subflow. So this little uh, looking icon, because I haven't assigned a different icon to it, if I double click, is a actual grouping of different nodes together and grouped together into what they call a subflow that helps you manage these. And so you can have different input numbers and edits. You can also set up properties um, about you know the details of the flow, um, you know information about it. And then within this flow, I'm actually going to iterate all of the details that are being passed to us, so all the MAC address and things. And this is where I want to go through and do checks and values and um, you know, figure out what's out there. And I can work with the individual objects. And then I'm going to have two different outputs that I can further process, as you saw, the, um, the results. So uh, that was you know, one way the, to do things there. And... Um, Kind of anything to do with the ARP cache. Now, I mean, this thing kind of throws me back out here. So then, really, what I'm doing then is I'm just taking the output, and I'm I just want debug of everything, but I don't need to. I can have just one or the other, All right? So I thought, uh, you know, a couple things there that were interesting, and one last thing because we've been working on this DNS statistics channel and buying stats. Um, one of the things about this is I wanted the ability to kind of take my PowerShell functionality and stuff I'm doing in Visual Basic Net, and I wanted to put it into the server, you know, in a server somewhere that can be run in the enterprise by permissions and with access controls that I could have either automatically piped into it a list of DNS servers or on-demand call this. And the reason I'm thinking on-demand is you think of like in a DNS administrator, if you're you know, out in the environment, you're not at your desk, I mean, we expect that people are doing things, but if you needed to check and you had access to a web, pass it in a DNS server IP and be able to pull back the results. And so that's kind of what I did, telling it to go in and, and get the stats. And then I'm telling it to create a payload, which is effectively going to take the input parameter, which is the DNS server IP, 
and then using the URL that we were working on the other day, pass it into the server parameters, um, pulling out the server stats. And then I was going to have it in the processing as, a, you know, of course, this will do the call. And there's an XML mode or node that will take that XML output and process it and turn it into objects that we can then convert to other formats and process further. So all of that XML coding I was doing in my other applications, PowerShell was doing that quite well as well. Here's Node's example of it. And you can control effectively the attribute tags, how, to, how they should be denoted in the return result, you know, and what property. So if it's not the payload, maybe it's something you copied into uh, something like a blocks XML or along those lines. And then the last part was I wanted to return it just as a back to the calling endpoint so we could see uh, what was happening there. So this is using a post. Uh, one second, let me find my tool real quick, and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, and so I have a script that in my Linux system that I use for testing and everything, um, I'm running curl. Uh, so effectively, I could do this through PowerShell as well, or through curl, or any of the functions we've looked at in any of the series of videos. But what I'm doing in this particular case, now different than my other APIs, is I'm doing a post. So that you're going to post in this information um, using the headers of content, application JSON, a data element, which is a wrapper around a DNS IP parameter. And it's going to pipe in the first parameter of the arguments, the command line arguments. And then it's going to call the endpoint get stats that we set up through this workflow. So to kind of demonstrate that, I should be able to just run this using my server IP that we've been testing with. And I'm going to get back the results, not very readable. But piping it through my JQ, then I can see this parsed out in its color-coded object structure, pretty printed. So now I see that I have an array of object uh, objects that are then, um, you know, counters or the, you know, counters here, the names represented by the dollar sign. And I could parse this out. And so now I have taken basically the PowerShell stuff and VVNet things and moved it into a server. And so as I start progressing in the server function here, I'm going to go ahead and build out um, that DNS statistics server. And uh, we're also going to build out through this, going back to one of my other videos with the MAC address, I still need to start up again on part two of that. And I think I'll do that today, where I'm going to take all of that functionality where I was getting all of the different MAC address OUI text files, comparing the dates and times, and then having an API that I can call anywhere in my enterprise or home or API process programmatically and MAC address, and it'll feed back to me the vendor and use Node Red and its scheduling abilities and endpoint API prototyping to instantly give me an API. And, and that's what I ultimately want because I'm going to start feeding off that. And as I start developing new software, I want to use Node Red as a platform for that, you know, because I think it's a, such a capable thing. It's open source. You can get it out on, on vendors like BT Diamond IP and their cloud automation. Although, again, word of you know, note and caution that uh, not all these nodes will be applicable there. You know, so but you have other options in Linux and Windows or any other platform to you know, build any kind of additional APIs on top of your IP automation if you go that route. So there's a uh, three different examples and I have some really complex ones that I want to get into at a later date, um, probably later as I get into the MAC address stuff, where if you're kind of a you know end user and you might have an external DNS provider for your local website, you're like me, you know, you just want to host your DNS domain somewhere or you're a, a company, there are great hosting services through Dyn DNS, Oracle Dyn DNS, through their acquisition and mergers that uh, we have an API that I've kind of just through example built through some uh, API interaction for managing DNS domains through IP control and pushing that detail up into the cloud into their Dyn DNS APIs and then bringing it back down and comparing the information um, for IP control imports. So there's a, a few things I've been working on and maybe we'll get into some of that complex type design at a later date. And I, I really want to get back into one more, and I, I'm going to stop talking on this video for a while. Uh, we're in, I have this API, email API, which I started developing because I wanted to look at other interfaces 
other than text, other than chat, other than interactive, I'm lazy sometimes. I just want to email. I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to interact interactively. I want to send an email and I want a response. And I want the ability to do it in real time uh, in that capacity. And, and that's just the way I am sometimes when you, you spend so many hours doing things. But you may not. But this is a great interface. And so what I found is that through email and through some of the capabilities of the node, I'd say Linux or Windows, most likely Linux, you're going to have email capabilities. And so I built an email gateway using my automatemyip.com domain in users that you can send email requests. You can send help. You can send a request. You can send a, a email structure, copy and paste that uh, provisions the next available IP. And really where I was going to go with this, uh, for those who might be interested or listening, is I was looking to build an internet service for engineers like myself that for one subnet is free that it would give you IP address management through APIs uh, for anything you want to do. So you could query it through, you know, simple web or email, and it'd give you back your details about your IP addresses. And then you can build APIs and discovery to automatically feed into that data, extracting it, and so on. And so I'm looking into the design, getting some sponsorship and things behind the scenes. But that was something I was looking at. So if anybody's interested in developing it, let me know. Uh, I have some great ideas around it, and, and I'm going to pursue it. But... Slow going when it's on your own dime and uh, working on your own. So, but I've got concept here, and I've also know that there's some other capabilities through IBM with Node Red that they host this in the cloud. So if I design a workflow and that will work in the cloud, I have um, a tremendous business model that I can then tie back into subscription services that I think that through IBM's Blue Node Blue or Blue Mix that I can have almost build a whole platform for my company and grow as I see fit or grow, you know, move forward. So I'm, I'm pursuing so many different things. I'm surprised I can focus any of this. So if you have thoughts like that, let me know. Give me some comments. Um, but I want to show some of this too. And I'm going to clean this up uh, tremendously. And the way that I envisioned it is having workflows that represent each of the functions and then having each of those tabs cleaned up to their respective areas. But this is all something in madness that I was creating as I was having fun with it. Uh, ask our sales guys. And I was just, uh, you know, kind of building it out to see what the capabilities are, what's possible, and what can we do just quickly through example. All right, guys. Thanks again. Started to talk and ramble so much. I uh, hope any of this was helpful. Again, if you're into this kind of thing, give me an uh, email, uh, contact at ipdevnet.com. And it's David Cross. Let me know. Take care. Have a great weekend if we don't see each other talk. And if I have any great ideas or things I come up with, I'll throw these out there too. Take care.